What's up, guys? Nick here. And this last week in the stock market was absolutely crazy. The stock market tanked. The Fed increased interest rates by 0.75%, which was a shock to me. I wasn't expecting that. But let's go ahead and look at my portfolio. I currently have $42,518.40 for a weekly loss of $2,181.00. And 23 cents. And in fact, every single stock in my portfolio was down this week. It's absolutely crazy. See, all the way from IBM to Johnson and Johnson, AbV, Apple, SCHD, Home Depot, MasterCard, all the way to American Waterworks. Even if I show you my real estate stocks, all of those were down this week. So it was absolute carnage in the stock market. And I actually want to show you guys my one month, my market loss, $4,541.88 in one month. That is more money that I put than I funded into my portfolio just this year. And I can show you that right here. I've put $4,340 into my portfolio this year. And the stock market going down has wiped it all out. But there is a silver lining. There is some positivity to this. If I go over to my dividend growth chart, as you can see, when I first started investing, I made just $25 and two cents in my first year of investing because I started late September of 2019. And then in all of 2020, I made $385.55. Then in all of 2021, I made $1,421.38. And now we're not even halfway through the year. And I've made over $1,000 at $1,072.38. And, you know, as you can see, my dividend income just keeps rising. I know I say that every week. But it's true. I expect to hit a record this month by the end of it. And so that's the thing that I look to when I evaluate my stock portfolio is how I'm doing with my dividend income. As long as that increases and I make more money year over year, then say, for example, if we go right back, as long as I make more money this June, than I made last June, which as you can see, I'm not even finished with the month and I've already made more in June of 2022 than June of 2021, I'd say my portfolio is performing and it's doing what I set it up to do. See, when I started investing in September of 2019, I was expecting that we'd hit a recession or a bear market. I thought something was coming and I already love dividend stocks, but I just wanted to make sure that my portfolio was protected. We can actually go to the all time. You can see that I'm actually negative for the first time in my portfolio, negative $700.13, or negative $713.29. I've been up as much as 6,500 or more in the green, but nothing has changed about my portfolio. And so what I was talking about, I figured we were heading towards a recession or at least a bear market or something. So I created a defensive portfolio and this is a portfolio that I'm gonna stick with because I enjoy these stocks and I believe in them. And I know that they're gonna keep providing me with dividend income. What was that one? Clorox, absolutely hammered. But so I'm actually really excited for this downturn in the market because in March of 2020, during the pandemic, when the stock market crashed, I wasn't investing money. What I was doing was creating and building up my emergency fund, making sure that I was set up on that end and I probably could have invested half, saved half for my emergency fund. So, because I wish I would have bought more shares. 
And that's the whole point of this is that even though your portfolio is going down, the key is to consistently invest and to keep stacking more shares of the stocks that you love because that will give you a higher dividend yield and it'll get you more dividend income. For example, we can go to SCHD and if I click on it, even though I have 7.26 shares, even though my average share price is $76.35 and the real price is $70.31, when I started investing in SCHD about a month ago, I want to say the dividend yield was 2.87%. Now it's 3.19%. So as this stock decreases in value, its dividend yield increases. So that's actually a positive for me. And I'm going to keep throwing my money into SCHD. And eventually, I'm going to go over to my real estate pie and lower that from 20% to 15 And I'm going to throw that money into SCHD. And then I'm going to lower it from 15 to 10 And I'm going to throw that percentage into SCHD again. And the future is for SCHD to be... 40% of my portfolio. Because even though that's a really great ETF, I still don't think you should ever have any one stock in 50% of your portfolio. But now let's go over to my activity for the last week. On June 13th, I received a dividend of $9.02 from 3M. I deposited my weekly $125. And then I Auto invested $158 into SCHD for 2.15 shares. Next, on June 15th, I received an $8.08 .08 dividend from Kellogg's, a $6.51 dividend from O Realty, and a $5.32 dividend from Stag. On the 16th, I received a $12.27 dividend from Duke and a $7.55 dividend from Home Depot. And then I bought more SCHD at port at um 0.4 shares. And then of course I've got $19.82 just waiting to go into SCHD. And on Tuesday when the market opens back up, I'll put another extra 125. So one last thing I want to show is why dividend growth. And this chart shows that dividends have been a significant component of total return over the years. In fact, if we go right here, it says from 1930 to 2020, dividends have made up 40% of the total return on investment. And if we actually go over here to the 2020s, it says the dividends have been really low at only 8%. However, this chart only goes to December 31st of 2021. And so with that being said, this the dividend returns would definitely increase because the stock market has decreased a lot since December 31st. But if we just go back on the chart, for the 1930s, it doesn't have enough data for the 1940s, dividends made 67% of the total return. For the 1950s, dividends made 29% of the total return. In the 1960s, it's 43%. In the 1970s, it's 72%. In the 1980s, it's 28%. In the 1990s, it was 16%. 2000s didn't have enough data. And the 2010s was 16%. So as you can see, dividends are definitely relevant for your portfolio. They provide a lot of returns. And you should definitely keep putting your money into dividend stocks, reinvesting, and just holding them until you need them in the future. So guys, thank you for watching.